All right, so she was all excited about one of her friends that got a new dog, new dog for the family, and then realized like maybe this dog was lost and she's just been claiming it as her own. Yeah, anyone who's lost a pet or just has the irrational fear like me that your pet's going to get lost, you are going to feel this. So her friend says that she rescued a dog and everyone in her life was so excited about it. They even wanted to throw the dog like a little doggy baby shower, which I thought was the cutest idea ever. And then the friend found out that she didn't rescue the dog from like a shelter. She found it on like the side of the road. And so her friend's like, wait a second, you found this dog. It knows all these commands. It's very well behaved. This is probably some family's dog. So you've got to you got to do your research, go to the shelter, put up some ads, figure out if some family is out looking for this dog. And we have an update. She says, after two sleepless nights, I knew I had to do something. Sure enough, after searching Facebook for maybe 20 minutes, I found a post about the missing dog my friend had claimed as her own. No kids involved like I had assumed. It was actually an elderly woman who was distraught and frantically searching for her dog. I forwarded the post to my friend with the message. It was weighing on my heart, so I did a search and found this. I think you did a beautiful thing by opening up your home and heart to this dog, but now it's time for you to do another beautiful thing and return her. Needless to say, the message wasn't uh, wasn't received well. She couldn't believe I went behind her back and found the dog's real owner. She accused me of laying a guilt trip on her and that I should have minded my own business. I haven't heard from my friend since. But I had faith. Every day, multiple times a day, if I'm being honest, I checked the little old lady's Facebook page, hoping my friend would do the right thing. And she did. A few days later, there was a tearful post with a picture of her reunited with her beloved Sammy. My friend did the right thing like I knew she would. However, I don't know if our friendship has suffered irreparable damage. I have no regrets, though. I'm hoping time will help my friend realize I did the right thing, and so did she by returning the lost pup. I think that's all you can do, right? Is try to do the right thing and the way they react. You don't have any control over all that. Yeah, your friend sounds crazy. Like, you (laughs) took somebody else's dog, and she's like, hey, maybe you should return it to the rightful owner, and you're going to be mad at the friend. That, to me, is so ridiculous. And, like, if somebody took my (laughs) cat and then refused to give her back, she sounds wild. But you notice how when people do something wrong and they know it's wrong, they deflect so hard <laughs> to try to prove that they're not the bad one, to turn it around on you. It's like, it's a whole like manipulation mm-hmm. tactic. And then after you sit in it, you're like, yeah, no, I was the one that was in the wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you knew it all along. And you totally knew your it all along. Your gut was telling you. And it's like, and it's like your reaction to it because you're sheepish and you're like, you're embarrassed and you're shameful. So those feelings turn you into like this person that's going to make other people feel bad for your decisions when you knew all along what you were doing was not the right thing. Yeah, it feels like misguided anger. I think she's mm-hmm. more upset that she actually found the family. So now she didn't have a reason or a way that she can keep it without, without actually feeling bad about it. Mm-hmm. And so you're mad at your friend when... Like like you said, Kristen, she's really mad at herself. So I think she did the right thing. I wouldn't think I twice about this at all. And if they are real friends, they'll find themselves back together. Agree. Uh, look, we got about 90 seconds here before we got to take off. So let me ask you guys, is everybody here now on threads? Yes. Cass, will you grab a mic here? Yeah, yeah. So like this is the last thing I wanted is another social media platform to have to like <laughs> share stuff on. So something's got to go. <laughs> something's got to go. <laughs> so right now I'm wondering if it's going to be Twitter or if it's going to be Threads. But for those that don't even know what Threads is yet, Cass, you want to tell them? Threads is, and Zuckerberg has said this, is Zuckerberg's response to Twitter. It's it's essentially Twitter again, and they've even poached, allegedly poached, dozens of Twitter employees, and Twitter is suing, like, to build Threads. So it's the same kind of thing, except what I like about it is it's connected to your Instagram account. But what you need to know before you sign up on Threads, you cannot delete Threads without deleting your Instagram account. Oh, damn. Okay. You can deactivate it, which will hide your comments and your posts and retain your data, but you can't actually delete your Threads hmm. account with because it is linked to Instagram. But this is good because it means a lot of people, when they signed up for Instagram, not everyone, but they use their real face, their name, they post photos, hmm. which means Threads is going to be a nicer, friendlier place. Not totally, oh. but because people won't be able to be nasty and troll because it's linked to their real accounts. Ah. 
Uh, okay, because I have been wondering now, and I've only dabbled in it because we were away and I just didn't want to deal with it all, but I sampled in it and I was wondering what the difference is because it looks so similar. It does seem, at least for the first four days, like a friendlier place, like people aren't beating each other up just yet. And now that makes sense because they are held accountable. Yes, and you can, like, you're, you can, instead of doing like 280 characters in a tweet, you can do up to 500 characters. You can do five minutes of video if you want. So it's longer, th- longer text, longer video. Video, and the way they've got it set up, it's to manage conversations better. So right now, if you log on, your feed's kind of a mess because you'll see people you're not following and it's not in chronological order. Those things are coming down the line. So right now you're supposed to see stuff from people who are kind of like you and it's going to help people get discovered better as well. Okay. So Twitter kind of buries people. So this will help you find some new people like you. Do you have to have an Instagram in order to have threads or yes. can people sign up to, for, with threads without an Insta? You have to have your Instagram account. See, that's what makes them held accountable because you know who they are. And this is part of the Fediverse, which is coming down the line. So in theory, you'll be able to use your threads account to interact with non-Facebook Instagram entities like Mastodon or Blue Sky down the line as well. So, so you could create a fake Insta yeah, and then a yes. fake and a fake uh, threads also and then get back to the same Twitter crap. Yeah, but that's okay. a lot of steps to go through. Right. So okay. more work to troll. Yeah. <laughs> the, the trolls are going to be trolling. Yeah. The Burt Show. So first, thanks for watching. Second, you like what you just watched? That just scratches the surface. Get the Burt Show on any podcast platform. We're so good.